Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Air Arms S410 TDR. This is an air gun that I've been wanting to hunt with for a very long time and today I'm finally getting my chance. Now I'm faced with quite a unique situation today because I'm going to be doing some pest control. I'm going to be shooting some starlings that are causing a bit of a problem. However, we are at a holiday resort, which means that there are people here trying to enjoy a nice relaxing holiday with the family. We can't just be dropping these starlings left, right and center. We've got to be discreet. And I don't know any air rifle more discreet than the TDR. This thing is ridiculously quiet and it's a takedown rifle, which means that it packs away into a nice little carry case. You'll never know it's an air rifle until you see it shoot. I can actually see some starlings flying around here now, so let's waste no more time, let's get straight to it. The resort I'm at today is well known throughout South Africa for providing relaxing farm style lodging far away from the busyness of the city life. Because of the reputation at stake, it's of utmost importance that the resort is kept free of pests and if there's one species that the managers want gone, it's the starling. The chalets and the buildings provide the perfect nesting spots for these birds and as a result their numbers have absolutely exploded out of control. I have hunted these birds before with an Air Arms S510 Extra from Long Rangers in a previous Air Arms TV episode and this time I'm back with a different rifle. My job today is to get rid of as many starlings as I can in the vicinity of the buildings and it doesn't take long before I line up on the first bird. Nice, that was uh, actually aimed here for his neck and I think I spined him because he didn't move at all, so. <laughs> that was so cool, man. The replay confirms a perfect shot to the lower neck and it's straight back to business. I spot another two birds sitting in an oak tree and I line up on the one to the left. That's about 33 meters, so um, if you take the incline into consideration, this gun's there at a 25, so I can pretty much aim dead on and I aim kind of like towards the, the top end of his body and solid thud and went straight down but I absolutely love the sound of a, of a 12 of a silenced 12 foot pound gun you know I'm used to shooting like 30 foot pound 22s this is a 12 foot pound 177 it's just so quiet it allows you to hear the pellet going through the air it allows you to hear the sound of the pellet hitting the, the bird and this is actually a, a Q-Tech silencer on this on this uh, TDR, it's not the standard silencer that comes with the rifle. Uh, this is a silencer made by Air Arms, a new silencer, and it's ridiculously quiet. You, you basically just hear the, the ping of the hammer hitting the valve, and then the sound of the bird dropping. It's awesome, I love it. As yet another bird appears on the roof, I load up once more, I take aim, and I squeeze the trigger. That actually looks like a, a European styling, so it's not it's not what we came out here to target, but those we, we don't like those around here either, so we shoot them on sight. So it's good to get one of those down. It's an absolutely stunning day, and as the sun makes its way high into the sky, I'm grateful to be able to look around and appreciate the scenes that surround me. Hunting is so much more than just shooting, and sometimes you just need to sit back, forget about the animals you're after, and just enjoy the moment for a minute or two. I just want to talk about the differences between these two species quickly. Uh, this bird over here is the red winged starling. This is the one that we're primarily targeting today. It's a native species and it's known for kind of carrying diseases and being a, a general nuisance around the farmyard. I could probably compare these to like a magpie in the UK. Um, these on the other hand are not a native species. These are introduced to South Africa and a lot of the British colonies during colonial times and they've absolutely exploded out of control um, so their their problem is more a numbers thing uh, where these guys um, the, the numbers aren't the problem it's it's the behavior that's the problem you know both of these I have to take out but these are primarily what we're focusing on today so yeah, they're just ever so slightly bigger I think they're slightly cleverer um, but these guys are also quite a problem so we'll, t we'll shoot them on sight when we see them I spot another red-winged starling sitting on a pole and I think to myself, alright, here's my chance to prove to the UK boys that you don't need an FAC air rifle to take long range shots. 71 meters, it's <laughs> a long way off. Alas, the pellet drifts off just to the right, plucking a few feathers from his chest on the way past and I'll have to wait another day to prove my point. Best part about this gun is that when a magazine's empty, you can just take it out, replace it with one of these at the back, slot that one right in, and there you go. New magazine in, as simple as that. I love it. 
there's a bit of a lull in activity around the chalets for quite some time and I realized that I've probably spooked most of the birds off. These birds are very clever and once they catch on that they're in danger, they don't hang around. I decided to take a look around the golf course, having been told earlier that the pied starlings had begun to become a bit of a nuisance on that part of the resort. At first there's nothing to be seen, but eventually I stumble upon a whole flock right on the edge of the course. Okay, there are four starlings right over there. I'd say that's probably about, probably about 50, 50 or 60 meters away. I'm going to hold over about just over two more dots. The last one's a long way off at almost 60 meters, but I hold over and I put him down with a good heart and lung shot. Ah oh, man, one of the things I, I like most about this gun is, is how quiet it is. I mean, there were a whole bunch of starlings there. After I shot the one, the rest just didn't even register that their friends were dying because of this gun. They couldn't hear the shot go off. They could only hear their friends like falling to the ground dead. And I, I absolutely love that. It's dead quiet. It's so easy to load, it's so compact, um, it's definitely my first choice for shooting smaller animals like this and the fact that I can get so many shots out of such a small air cylinder is amazing, you know, I'm used to getting like 20 shots per full out of the high power rifles and this means I can just walk around all day, it's great to have a, such a compact rifle that can do the job so well and it's so accurate. Okay, here they are over here, and you can see this is actually a different species of starling once again. This is a pied starling. Note the, the white around the bum area over here. Um, I've actually hunted these quite a lot on my own channel. I've done some long range shooting like 110 meters or so on these guys. Um, and these are basically um, very, very similar to the red wing starlings. Uh, the only difference is that um, they don't have the, the red on their wings and they've got the, the white underneath. It's the only difference. Other than that, they, they're very, very similar and yeah, they cause the same problems that the red-winged starlings do, nesting in the rooftops, carrying diseases. So here's the first bird. Second one was quite close to him. And the third one is right over here. To get three birds within five meters of each other in, in about a minute or so, that's quite unique. Uh, you can only do that with a quiet air rifle. Um, if I was using my any of my other high-powered air rifles, I simply would not be able to do this. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's really nice to have a, a nice 12 foot pound air rifle in my arsenal. That's a good job. After a successful morning shooting, I head back across the golf course towards the chalets and assess the day's events. Well, it was a really good morning shooting. We managed to get four red wing starlings, three pied starlings and a European starling. A nice mixed bag of pests. Uh, some of them birds that you may not even know existed. And uh, the best part is that I never even had to refill any of these magazines on the TDR. I uh, went through one of them and I put in a second magazine and I didn't even have to use a third. Didn't have to refill on air, you know. I'm just so impressed with the fact that this gun was so quiet that I could get these three pied starlings one after another without, without any issues. These are clever, clever birds. I've hunted a lot of the TDR before, but ne never on animals this clever. Um, and so it passes test with flying colors and I'm very, very impressed. Day two comes to an end in the best way possible, with a beautiful African sunset. We get the fire started and it's not long before we have some kudu steaks on the bra. With high hopes for the next morning, we head off to bed and we dream about squirrels. <laughs>